With the final design in place, Monica and Peter are eager to begin construction on their new home. However, they're now racing against time to finalize key secondary choices, as delays on these could impact the entire project timeline. To visualize their flooring options, Monica and Peter are using Sweet Home 3D. After visiting several showrooms, they downloaded images of their preferred tiles directly from the manufacturer's websites. Then, using GIMP, they enhanced these images by adding grout lines and testing out various patterns to bring their ideal flooring to life, steps we explored together in an earlier video. In a previous lesson, we also learned how to import new textures into Sweet Home 3D, as well as how to name and categorize them for easy access. Let's dive into the ground floor. Start by selecting the ground floor tab. To maximize the 3D view, drag the divider between the floor plan and the 3D view. Then, right-click on the 3D view, and in the pop-up menu, select Aerial View if it isn't already selected. As we discussed in our Boost Your Design Efficiency video, we've set up the app to easily edit objects in the 3D view and automatically center the selected object. In Design Amazing Interior Rooms Like a Pro, we also explored various methods for creating rooms. To change the floor tiles, start by double-clicking on the floor. In the Modify Rooms window, select the floor region, then click on the texture button. You'll have the option to choose from imported textures or browse the predefined Sweet Home 3D textures available in the list. Monica, however, wants to use a large format tile she downloaded from a website measuring 120 cm by 60 cm. Let's add it to the space and see how it looks. To apply a new tile, click the Import button. In the new window, click Choose Image. Then navigate to the folder where your tile images are stored. Carefully select your image by clicking on the file and viewing the preview on the right. A warning will appear indicating that the image size might affect performance. Select Keep and Change to retain the original quality, then click Continue to proceed. In the following step, enter the tile's dimensions using your chosen units. For this example, Set the height to 1.2 meters, and notice that the width is automatically calculated. To organize your textures, give the tile a clear name, set its category to My Tiles, and add the creator or manufacturer's name. When ready, click Finish and confirm by pressing OK twice. To explore the 3D view in more detail, right-click within the 3D view and select Virtual Visit from the menu. In the Plan view, click on the camera icon to select it, then drag it to the desired position for the best angle. To zoom in closer, right-click the 3D view again, choose Modify Virtual Visitor from the menu, and set the eye level to 0.5 meters. To navigate, hold down the left mouse button and drag to pen the view, or scroll with the mouse wheel to move forward and backward in the room. You can also use the arrow keys for navigation. You should now clearly see the grout lines, each one illustrating the precise spacing between the tiles. In the video titled Adding Grout Lines in GIMP, we'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process of adding grout lines to tile images, ensuring a clean and professional look. Let's explore the other settings for tile placement. In this layout, the longest side of the tiles runs from the main entrance toward the kitchen. To adjust this orientation, double-click on the floor area. In the floor section, click on the texture button, set the angle value to 90 degrees, and confirm by pressing OK twice. Next, We'll adjust the orientation to 45 degrees. Let's use the Undo and Redo buttons to explore the different layout effects these orientations can create. When tiles are laid parallel to the longest wall in a room, this alignment naturally draws the eye along the room's length creating a sense of extension and emphasizing spaciousness. 
Alternatively, arranging the tiles at a 90-degree angle aligns them perpendicular to the longest wall, accentuating the room's width. This can make a narrow room feel broader and open by drawing focus across its width instead of its length. A diagonal layout, on the other hand, introduces dynamic visual interest and flow, especially in open spaces. This arrangement can make narrow rooms appear wider, but it typically requires more time to install due to the precision cuts needed along the walls and corners. Additionally, because of the angled cuts, you may need to budget for extra tiles to account for potential waste. Let's start by setting the tile placement from the main entrance, which is often a preference in design. To communicate this choice effectively with professionals, it's helpful to display it clearly in our designs. To adjust the tile alignment, double-click on the floor and select the texture button for the floor area. From here, we can modify the offset of the tiles. In this example, we'll set the X offset to 15% and the Y offset to 25%. After confirming by clicking OK twice, you'll see the tiles now align with the main entrance. Another key parameter is the tile finish whether the tiles are matte or shiny. This selection is accessible by clicking on the floor, where we can choose between matte or shiny finish. This choice will affect the final rendering and the overall look of the space. Sweet Home 3D is an excellent tool, allowing us not only to create precise walls and room layouts but also to represent our tile choices in detail by specifying their exact dimensions. Best of all, it's completely free. In our next video, we'll explore Monica's and Peter's would like tile options for the first floor. See you then!